Hi everyone, welcome to my Sherline studio. I'm Sybil Mustig. Today we're going to be working with some texture plates. And I have some panels in front of me here. Uh, this is uh, Color Factory's canvas panel. I've treated it with um, a clear coat, a clear coat that's like clear gesso. Um, you can get this. This is a Beauty Tone designer series. I talked about this before in an earlier episode. And this is great, uh, much less expensive than uh, regular clear um, gesso. Works great. And uh, so I'll show you how I go about doing these texture plates. So we just have to decide uh, what we're going to do first. So we're going to probably start with our keys. And I have some regular gel mat uh, golden medium here. You can use um, this one uh, molding paste, but I found it was a little bit too stiff for my purposes. I suppose you could mix them, but this worked pretty good. And you don't need a lot. Just going to put it on here with a palette knife. You can see it's fairly goopy to begin with. It dries clear, and I just sort of muck about with it on here until we have most of it coated. It's like buttering toast. <laughs> okay, so at some point you probably want to lift it up and get on as much as you can. You don't need a lot. Um, if it's too deep, the keys won't make a good impression. And good impressions are important, as we know. So we're just going to put all this stuff on there. And then I've got um, a brush that I use for putting gesso on. And I've wet it down a little bit. There we go. Almost done. So you can see it, you know, it's got a fair amount of solidity. And I'll use my brush. Like I said, if I've wet it a little bit so it's more workable. And then just um, brush it across, brush it down. It sort of gives you a, a weave texture like the canvas itself. Maybe some diagonals, whatever it takes to get it reasonably smooth. It's okay if you have a little bit of texture in the back. You just want to look out for little blobby things. Okay, getting there. Try and get it as smooth as possible. If you would like less texture, then uh, use, uh, what is this thing, Joshua? Spatula or a trowel? Uh, scraper. <laughs> scraper. <laughs> so, so that will get it smoother as well. Doesn't have to be perfect. Texture is good. This, this is a texture plate after all. Okay, and then wipe your tools because this stuff is sticky. Especially your brush. You don't want this on your brush. So now we have our keys. And if you remember from our previous episode, I have all these lovely little keys from a little local shop. And uh, be fairly spontaneous with where you place these. And then wipe as you go. Take a little wipe, especially if you're doing it more than once. So to get a good impression, get a really good And you probably won't get all of the key. Uh, do your best. If it's too thick, you can see it starts giving a raised um, profile. So you don't want that. That's why you want to have it fairly, fairly low. 
and so forth. You get the idea. You'll see as a, I'm not sure you can see it on the camera, but you'll see it come up. Don't forget to wipe. And maybe this one. This one leaves a really nice impression. The flatter, the better. So if you have some nice flat keys or buttons, that works great. And maybe a, a big tall one here. I don't know if we got all of that, but the point is texture, right? Yeah, whether you see the whole key or not is not terribly relevant. You get the feeling of keyness. <laughs> I have this little cute little guy with a heart on it. Okay. So then all you do is let that dry. Uh, once it's dried, I take a bit of sandpaper and uh, I'll just put it where in front of the heater here and later on just take a little bit of, I think this is, I don't know if there's a number on here, um, P600. So this is emery, isn't it? Or, I know, but it's 600 grit. 600 grit. There you go. And then what it does is it takes off, you know, any little globby pieces and cleans up your sides and so forth. Just wait for everything to dry. Overnight is probably best. And then with the magic of the video, we have one done already. <laughs> and I'm just going to roll out a little bit of paint on here just to show you, because I'm sure you can't see the impression of it. Whether there's keys there or not. And we just spray her off with violet. And we're just put it over where the camera is and there we go. So you can see all the key impressions you made and that will print. Okay, so let's just wipe that clean for now. Uh, clean it with a, a little wipe of some kind, like a baby wipe. Wipe yourself if need be. <laughs> Always necessary. <laughs> Okay, so the next one, uh, this is a, just a little spongy thing. Um, I think I got it at Michael's. And all you do is you heat it up with a little heat gun. Um, this is mine. I won't plug it in because we lose the impression. As soon as you heat it, everything disappears. You can push the keys down on it and that will uh, stay until you heat it again. So it's kind of handy. Um, there are sides to it, so you could probably put key impressions on there too. But if you get the heat on the top, you'll lose some of the detail on, on the top. So anyway, that's another way of getting, we'll work with that later. So the next one I did, I, I won't go through the process because it's the same as the last one. And the only thing I did differently was that I, I drew on it with a tool. I had it here a second ago. I think it went flying. Anyway, uh, you can use anything. Just put your medium on again, and then uh, you could draw with a knife. You could draw with a pencil. Anything to get the shape. In this case, uh, we're drawing little rocks. And I think you can see a little bit uh, some of the tech. Anyway, we'll be working with this later so you'll actually see the result of that. So that's the other one. Now this one, uh, this is sort of a sponge. Now you can buy sponge apparently. <laughs> uh, that is got a sticky back on it and you just peel it away when uh, you know you get to that point. But um, my adventures in finding this particular product <laughs> were non-existent. So 
anyway, uh, what I did is, uh, well, first of all, I sprayed it with a, a glue, just a tacky, that was supposed to stay tacky, but it didn't. So all to the good. Le live and learn. <laughs> So what I did then, I, I had a, a little plate that my hubby cut for me. And again, I used the, I, I coated it first with the clear tone, you know, and you can use uh, the uh, clear gesso. And then I had cut all the shapes out of this. So this is this, you can use this as a stencil. And then you can use this as a texture plate. And then I just pushed while it was still wet with this uh, medium. I, I just attached the little pieces I cut out and, um, you know, just fit it on there and uh, you can see it's not going anywhere and I've already washed it. It's scraped with water. It's not going to come off like you would with CPVA glue or Elmer's glue or any of those things. So that works great. So we'll be using that as well. And we have an image for you. Okay, now Josh has to explain where this is because uh, I like to use, uh, we like to use um, images that we're familiar with. Now, I have seen castles in Germany, but, it, but not in the UK. So this is Josh's photograph and uh, it's Battle. It's the gatehouse of Battle Abbey, which is in East Sussex, um, right where the Battle of Hastings was. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Now I sort of have a clue. <laughs> okay, so this is a lovely doorway. As you know, we've been working with doors and um, we're going to actually be doing doorknobs uh, later on in this episode. This one here is kind of obscure. So we're working mostly with stones, which is why we did these little uh, texture plates and the, and the stencil. And uh, I'm going to do a transfer and then uh, and I found uh, we changed our printer ink, uh, which is an HB printer, to a cheaper brand. Like printing ink now is about $300 to change all the printing inks. And I use masses of it for my work. So I found that the image actually transfers really well uh, colored rather than black and white. So unless you can put it through twice through the printer to get more tone but it seems to work just fine with colors. So that's how we're going to run. So that's the next part. So grab your favorite beverage and come and join me for some fun uh, transfer. And then we'll start working with these little bits and pieces. So to do a successful transfer, I keep everything really clean. And I have some 90%, um, 99% alcohol with a bit of water in here. I spray my gel plate. I've already cleaned the brayer and just make sure that there's no grease of any kind on your gel plate. That makes the difference. I know some people have had trouble with the transfers and that might be one of the reasons. So here's our image again and uh, we're just going to use black and Remember, there's a fine line with the amount of paint you use. So just enough and not too much. And not too little either. Good coverage just without it being too thick and not transparent. Once you have it smooth, uh, spray her off your black. Then place your image. I use my brand for this. Make sure there's good coverage. Don't leave it too long. Like do this in under a minute. I'm using my usual Amsterdam paints. So oh, let's hope it's transferred. And I think we're getting a fairly good image. A little off on that one side, which is maybe a little bit lighter. 
but that's okay that's the side we're going to be putting our texture plate um, rocks on so that's probably perfect let this dry and then we're going to take another we'll just rub our brayer off here make sure that's clean and then we're just going to take a fairly neutral color let's have a look at the picture again I happen to have another one handy <laughs> so of course everything's in reverse right and I've forgotten which is the right view I think this is the right view or maybe I did flip it to begin I with did. I did okay all right whatever it's not really that important so and just I think that's fairly ready to go so just a neutral color and we we'll just have a look at some of the color here the rock and it's sort of on the violety um, white side so let's choose a, some colors here and maybe a touch of that violet that would be nice this is the only thing different this is artist loft deep magenta so the violet would go on this side with a little bit of white. Not too much, this is very intense color. A little bit of this uh, warm gray. Again, less is more, you can always add more. If you have too much, you have to bray it off. Just a little bit of white for the magenta. Okay, so we're just going to brayer it here. We'll get rid of this thing for now. I'm going to get rid of some of that. That's quite intense. So this is a release coat. It's meant to release the transfer and you have to have it. I'm just going to put a tiny bit more of this color on the gray, warm gray. And get off everything until you see the image underneath. If you have too much paint, um, that's all it's going to show. And don't do work too long with this. If it dries, it's not going to lift anything and then we have to start all over again, which is not good. I'm going to use my oriental paper because I've had lots of good success with transfers with that. And rub well. Make sure you've got the corners. Fingers crossed, we're going to have a good image to work with. Are you crossing your fingers, Josh? <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. Look at this. All coming up beautifully. So we have a tiny bit of detail on that far side. Not much. But we need, the, this is where we're going to be putting all our rocks and things, right? So, okay, we've got to let this dry. So take a quick break and we'll be back in a flash. <laughs> so we were just debating here about the color. So with the texture, this texture plate, um, it's slightly raised and whatever we put on there is going to print. Now with this one, whatever color we put on there is going to lift it up. So in that case, your rocks would be pink. Right? So you really got to consider what color is going to work for you. 
So we're going to do here, because this is the print and everything's in reverse, we're going to be doing brown on here and hopefully we can print that. So we'll do it in little bits and pieces. We're going to do a little bit of the orange and a little bit of brown. This is burnt umber. running them together a tiny bit to give them more of a, a rock kind of feel. So then you just roll it on. You can really see, we probably don't need the whole plate because we're just doing that lower portion. And roll it on, not too thick, Just enough. And transfer it quickly to the gel plate. And we'll probably have to use a gel plate as a stamp for this. So I'm thinking about there. We could measure it. So about there. Okay, so less than I figured. And that's going to be your rock for now and quickly key <laughs> oh it's that doesn't usually happen okay okay that should print nice about this oriental paper, it picks up everything. It's just mulberry paper, rice paper with a smooth... Okay, so we're getting some rocks. We could go a little darker. And it's starting to look really nice. It gives a feel of the rock wall. So again, we just maybe add a bit of black to that. I'm rolling it out on this extra plate so that we don't have blobs or too much color. So you get a smoother. And I might just roll some of that off. And cover my whole brayer. This is very close to regular printmaking. You know, we're using etching press and all that stuff. Okay, let's try that. Again, placing it. That was actually pretty good placement. It won't matter that we're registering those rocks or not. The point is to get an impression. And that looks pretty good. Again, use your stamp, your plate as a stamp. And uh, I always make um, my underneath plate, it's just a plexi plate underneath, a little bit wider so I've got place for my hands. And you can press it down so it'll stick and then just rub the back. If it's dried on you, you just need to put a release coat on it, so something light. It will get there eventually. So we're getting a little bit more, but I think it's dried on us a little bit, so... Just put some, um, 
I don't know about white. I think that would be too extreme. What about your medium? Uh, a little bit of medium is a good idea. But this stuff will work. And then I have lots of black on my roller, which I'm going to brayer off. So we'll try this. If it doesn't work, we'll add medium to it as well. And brayer off quite a bit of it. You just want to release that color underneath. Okay, most of this has to do with speed, so don't let it dry. Okay, just lighting up. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it's on the other side. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to um, put it back in my little container here because I'm always looking for it. So, ah, look at this. Nice. Okay. Now, with the top ones, I actually want the rocks to be sort of pinkish. So, what we're going to do is um, we're going to ink this, maybe the brown and pink in combination, or uh, we'll just ink the plate a neutral color and then place the rock. Oh, that might be the better idea, then you definitely will get pink rocks. I'm just placing my plate and I've got the image in reverse. I got had to be reminded. <laughs> oh dear, anyway. Um, and I'm going to draw out the edge of the, what is that, a lintel? I guess so. That's the outside part of the door frame. Now we'll just put that this way, it'll cue me as to where the placement is going to be. And um, first of all, our little rocks. I'm just going to ink this part. And we want that background to be pink, right? Those rocks are very pinkish at the top. So it's going to have to be fairly light, like almost a white color. So I'm just going to put that on here. Rear it out. I'm rolling it a little bit into that grayish brown color. And we're going to roll it on. See, by having that image underneath, you'll know exactly where the placement is, so that's perfect. I'm going to wipe away this bottom part because we don't need it. We've already got some nice um, texture there. If some of it prints, it's fine. Just nice rockishness. <laughs> okay, so now we use our little texture plate that we made. And we are just going to... Now this lifts the paint off and that's what we want. And some over here. We want pink rocks. And then we print. Again, plate a stamp. And put that down. Turn it over. <laughs> Remember where my brand was? <laughs> Always good. And oh, yes. And we have pink rocks. <laughs> Perfect. 
at the top. Now we might want to coordinate all that little bit. So, so we need a transition somewhere in here and maybe we can use this little guy and it will take the paint off and leave our rocks and block out everything else. And that might get rid of this. And while it's wet, you could probably play with it a little bit. This paper is amazing for um, being able to scrub a little bit. It doesn't pill on you. Just blot it. Just to get that really sharp edge off. You know, everything's fair game in art. You know, just do what you need to do. But see, no pilling and the paper is perfect. Study what's there. See, there's a bit of brownish tone in all this white plaster, the sort of pink plaster. And the... okay, let's roll maybe this far. And I'm just gonna make sure there's no funny straight edges here. So we get to try our little stencil that we made, so very good. And push down. You can also take another piece of paper or just a paper towel or something just to make sure that there's contact. And it might pick up some of the paint that's in between, see? But that's good. That you gave a little texture. Okay, so if you work this way, little bit by little bit, you'll have everything at one level and you don't have to resort to collage. I'm not against collage, but I like to try and do everything as much as possible at this level. And then if collage is necessary, well then of course you use it. But I kind of like it cohesive. And we might just soften, if we can still, soften that one edge. But I'm not unhappy with it. This is, the acrylics are a water-based paint, so when they're still workable, you can smush them about a little bit. But I kind of like this. Okay. And then just, and if you wanted to have that look, you know, of a print, just put it back on the plate. And that will give it that part that you just messed with. A print look. <laughs> and don't tell anybody. <laughs> Our secret. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. Now, of course, this is pretty static and it needs maybe one more tone. So we're going to do uh, roll out the rest of the plate. And uh, now this has got to be really, really, really light so that you're not um, covering any of the detail of the door. So I'm adding just a little bit of thinner to the mixture we made. We need this last layer to be really light. We want to coordinate this image with the rest of this. And we'll see how what we get here. Just a tiny bit of tone. We don't want to obscure any of the nice details of the transfer. And I 
again using the gel plate as a stamp reposition. Now best to be on the safe side so less is more at this point. You can always put another layer on right so but once you've got too much then you have to sort of have a white layer and then you're working you know too hard and uh, I like to do things as quickly as possible and save as much time as possible. Yes. Let's see here. Okay, we haven't obs obscured the details too much. We can probably deal with some of the things at the top. Just take some of the pink down a little bit. Painting is fine. Did I hear a gasp that I'm doing this? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> there. And coordinating on it. Now, there's one more level you could do. You could do some outlining. Um, you could even maybe go back to the, you know, your rocks and things. Um, give it a little bit more sharpness. But I think we did pretty good. So as an exercise and to show you the method for doing it, I'm sure you'll take lots more time than we did today. But for now, I think we're good. So do we say goodbye for now? <laughs> I think we have to do well, There's another episode coming up. Uh, we're going to be doing... Um, doorknobs next so I think that's another video so I'm going to say goodbye for now and tune in for the next part we have these wonderful doorknobs actually I will show you what we're up against again we're going to be doing transfers and then working with the texture so be sure and tune in for that and of course always like and subscribe <laughs> take care be good to yourselves have fun with art Bye for now.